Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. Today I want to take you with me into my brand new vegetable garden and plant two sweet cherry trees there with you. But not only do I want to plant them, I want to train them to grow as espaliers. And I'm really excited about that because I've never done it before, so it is really a lovely challenging project for myself. I did quite an extent research prior to this video to make sure that I do it right from the get-go. So how I want to structure today's video is first of all I want to tour you around in that area and show you what happened in the meantime because I was a little busy in the vegetable garden. Then plant those two trees together with you and give you all the information needed because there is a reason on why I chose two different kind of varieties of cherry trees and then really focus on the entire part on how to train them to grow as espaliers. And I think that doing this is a lovely project in the long run also because over the next couple of years I can always give you updates and show you how to prune it right, how they're progressing, hopefully share harvest video with you. So let's grab a shovel and get started because Alfie already is on her way to get into the vegetable garden, right? Yeah, come on, let's go. I think I've never really shown you the new vegetable garden from this angle here, even though I think it looks really fantastic, especially now with the new trellis as a backdrop. It really starts to frame everything and it's going to be a wonderful focal point really going into the future. If we walk along here, just look at that bearded iris are looking really beautiful and here this is the clematis that I planted together with you. Yes it has nothing to do with planting cherry trees today but still I want to give you an update already because it starts to grow, it is establishing. I think this is going to be just fantastic and what I did is I took some aquilegia seedlings from the upper garden and just underplanted the clematis here and I think that they all come true as pink blooms because the stems here they are all red and pinkish which means they will definitely not be white because then all of this would be green really nice and fresh green some of them might be blue or purple but I don't think so because they're very much on the pinkish side so I think that this is going to look really cute because then early on in summer like late spring early summer the aquilegia are going to come to bloom and then in midst of summer I will have these beautiful big purple blooms from the clematis can't wait to show you how it looks but this is the area that I want to focus on today so the vegetable garden the cold frames I love them already they are filled with dahlias which I potted up all of my dahlias um, I already took them out of the basement. They look really well. What I did here is this is going to be a narrow strip for cut flowers. And just yesterday I came in with bags of fresh garden soil, dug it all under. So it's lofty, it's very well prepared. In the back there is another trellis, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to stay there. I thought about growing runner beans here, but maybe I'm still going to put it into another area because I feel if I have cut flowers here, is it really going to be convenient to have uh, beans in the back there because <laughs> harvesting might be a little complicated. What I did is I filled up the last three raised beds with some special soil that is made for raised beds and for growing vegetables. So I think that this is going to be really wonderful. Not sure what I'm going to put in there but I'm definitely going to share it with you here. Strawberries are getting established and then my cauliflower. Well I kind of learned that I didn't only plant cauliflower by accident. I planted white cauliflower, purple cauliflower, but also red pointy cabbage because they were sown in the same patch. I labeled it, but while I was planting it, I didn't really pay attention to it that well. So it's going to be a little quirky fun raised bed here. I'm going to show you later on in the year what is going to happen. But this is the main thing that I want to focus on today. So first of all, the support system of the trellis. There is a reason on why I set it up prior to this video. Number one, I couldn't wait and I wanted to see how it works, to be honest with you. But then also, I anchored it pretty well. So if we just go down here, what I did is I have six beams. So I dug six holes, then I hammered these metal spikes in. They hammered in very well and already that was quite safe to be honest but then I backfilled with concrete, let it dry for at least 48 hours and now I know that it is definitely completely dried off, it is safe, it is perfect. Then I have these vertical beams, they're just like black beams from the garden center. They came as natural wood so I stained them black twice and then for the vertical support which is actually the real important part if you want to grow something into espalier, I used thick bamboo canes and it was recommended to use bamboo because it ages nicely, it's not going to be brittle after a while so it was heavily recommended to do so. The one thing that you should do if you want to do it on your own is don't try and squeeze a screw through bamboo, really drill a hole in there first and then comes the screw because if you try to squeeze the screw through there what is going to happen 
is that the bamboo is going to splinter. That happens on one of those canes here. So uh, yeah, luckily I had enough of them. That was good. But what I want to plant today are two cherry trees and I have labeled so I can tell you what kind of varieties I've got. First one is Cordaya. Yummy, perfect, really lovely, juicy, big red sweet cherries. Can't wait for those. And if you just look at the shape of the tree, I mean, this lends itself in to be grown as an espalier, even though that this is going to grow into a big tree if you allow it to. Second variety, just by the shape, it doesn't necessarily scream like, hello, I want to be an espalier. But I really wanted to have it because it was heavily recommended to grow it in your garden together with different cherry tree varieties. So this is called Laypans. This is a rather new variety. And what it already has, it is smothered in buds everywhere appearing, all the way along the stem even, even along the main stem, which was quite interesting. So I'm very thrilled about these two varieties. I've already prepared the planting hole. So what I want to do now is plant them. And while I plant them, I want to give you some key details about both varieties. I was honestly kind of hoping for a little bit of shade at this time of the year here because filming is always nicer when I'm not exposed to the full sun because then I kind of have like not a lot of color in my face. So I'm sorry for that. But it actually is very positive that there is zero shade here throughout the entire day because that means that these cherries are going to receive as much sunlight as possible and that is ideal if you want to grow kind of sweet cherries or fruit in your garden. What I did is I came in here with a special potting mix or mix to grow fruiting trees. This is something that very likely you can find in your garden center. Otherwise try to find a really nice um, soil, just a fresh one to give your trees the best that they can possibly get in the beginning. Beginning, so when they root out uh, there is some really lovely fresh soil for them because here naturally I grow on very sandy soil and it's not bad because cherry trees in general they're not very fuzzy what they really want to have is as, as much sun as possible and this is really what they're gonna get here so what I did is I already prepared the planting hole you can see that the containers itself they are not massive rule of thumb is if you plant something um, Dig out a hole that is triple the size of the container and backfill it with really lovely fresh soil and only then you come in with your tree. What I do as well, and this is just something that I heavily believe in myself, is I always give everything, besides something wants to grow in an acidic environment, some organic bone chips. Because what happens is that this is going to break down into nitrogen and is going to feed your plant. So this is definitely something really good and yummy for your plants. Cherry trees in general, I think that they are very pretty because also of the flowers. They flower white and they are a little bit centered. Oh, it comes out nicely. This is good. So always and check the roots. They are looking good. Normally there are always some fleshy roots in there. So you might want to try to break loose some of these here so that they can grow outwards. But in general, this is not pot bound, which is quite good. Good, I think here is one on the back side. Now they look good. I don't want to disturb too much because sometimes when you break them, there's more stress than trying to release it. But here this looks well good. Cherry trees in general, speaking of fruits, they produce heart shaped kind of fruits, which means that there is definitely um, a leader also going down there. So it's not just shallow roots and this is quite good because then they will be anchored well. Now I need to see they are leveled out good. I think this is really nice the way it is now. Maybe a tad deeper. Whenever you plant something, most of the plants, they should always be planted at that level. There is something that I'm going to plant with you in another video now, where it was recommended to plant it a little bit lower to how it comes in the container. So this is going to be interesting for me. But here, Definitely dead level because also the cherry trees are grafted. Both of them are and you can see the graft. There is like the stem here and then there is a tiny curve where something else comes out. So down here, pretty much 10 centimeters above soil level to how it is in the container. There is a graft. And I will always say this is how I learned it. Don't bury the graft because what happens is that then the, uh, the rootstock, which is the strong root system that you want to have is also going to send out branches suddenly and then you have two different plants. What I do now is firm it in nicely. So Cordaya, that is a really nice variety for different reasons. First of all, it produces really lovely big uh, red fruits, also with a red flesh inside. Very juicy, a little bit juicy sour, but I think that this is going to be very good in flavor. The one thing that they need is they 
do need to have a second cherry tree somewhere nearby in order to produce fruit. So they are not self-pollinating and this is why you need to have a second cherry tree next to it, which is the case for most of the sweet cherries or cherry trees in general. So just bear that in mind. But if you have the ability to grow something as an espalier, then the size of a tree is not so much of an issue because you can really restrain it to the size where you want to grow it. I think this looks very good by the way now just putting it in I firmed it in nicely which is also important always with your hands like this really make a fist firm it in all the way around nicely really wonderful the last thing on why I chose this variety is that if you have rain what sometimes happens with sweet cherries is that the skin is going to pop but here on this variety it's not supposed to happen so it is really going to withstand different kind of or difficult weather situations in your garden and you can harvest these cherries for pretty much four weeks from end of July so they say pretty much like 20th of July for four weeks up until 20th of August. So I'm gonna give you updates. I'm very excited about that. I'm going to backfill with a little bit of my straw now. Sorry for the audio, but still keep it a little bit open here. So when it rains, that the fresh rainwater can definitely come in here directly. I'm going to remove the little plastic thingy here because I don't wanna restrain anything. And now let's plant the second one. Planting the second cherry tree, basically it is exactly the same to what I just shown you before. So again, some really lovely organic bone chips in here. Always give it a nice stir so that they are really in the soil here. And then comes the tree. Again, it's a grafted one. It has, I just saw this funny little meshy around it here. I would always recommend you remove any of these things that are in there. Sometimes they also have like metal cages and it's not good to leave it in there. It's definitely better. If it is like that, is it level? Yes, it is level. So let me try to see how this can be trained. I think this will be quite good like that. All right, so Laypens, I think I told you before, this is a rather new variety. It was bred in Canada in British Columbia, and it was bred to be a self-pollinating variety, which is really lovely because if you really have limited space and if you just want to grow one cherry tree in your garden and you want to grow it really as a cherry tree, this might be your variety. Um, the fruits are supposed to be very nice, yummy, big, red. The other variety is supposed to have nicer fruits. So this was according to my research. I'm not going to lie about it. But it says that this is an amazing variety to pollinate any other cherry tree. So it's heavily recommended if you grow a sweet cherry tree to really partner with this one here because it produces an abundance of flowers full of pollen and it is just the perfect planting partner for any kind of cherry tree and yet the cherries are going to be delicious. They'll be ripe the same time as on the other varieties. So again, last week of July up until last week of August. So four weeks, lovely fruit production, hopefully. Again, the straw comes back in here. Need to be careful because there are my raspberries that I just planted with you, they, those are still happy. Yes, so I'm going to have raspberries here and here in between here. I'm going to have sweet cherries there. I love it. This entire area starts coming together. Really lovely. Don't they look cute? Best thing is both of those trees were surprisingly cheap. I think for both of them I paid 21 euros. Can you believe that for two cherry trees? I didn't even check the uh, price when I was in the garden center and at the checkout I was kind of like, shall I say something or shall I just like take it as it is and I was I just kept it very cute and quiet and I was like all right I'm just going to be happy that they were apparently very cheap so this is amazing so if I'm going to harvest something here already after one year this is going to be cheaper than buying cherries which is wonderful obviously so now I want to focus on how to train them and tie them in this is the exciting part now comes the fun part of tying everything in. To tie it in, I use metal wire that has a soft rubber coating around it. And the reason for it is that this is not gonna do any damage to the bark of this tree. But what you wanna do as well is over the years, always check it because the tree matures, the trunk is gonna get bigger and you don't want that these tires at one point disappear in your tree. So what I do first is I'm gonna fix the leader. And the leader basically, that is the main big trunk that goes up here. So what I will do is, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Let's hope they don't fly away now in the wind. So I'm gonna come in and now you see why the bamboo canes are really lovely because it's easy to come from the back here, 
tie it in and hold it in position. This looks good. Then the same thing. Ooh, the neighbor has a car workshop. So if you hear something drilling in the back, I'm sorry about it. I hope that the audio is still going to be good. And I'm not looking into the camera now. I'm sorry. <laughs> But this is important that this is definitely secured well enough. You can already see that the leader is actually at the top height. So what I need to do um, at the end of the season is that I will snip it off at the top and then hoping that I'm going to have like more branches coming here and on the top tier so I can tie those in as well. So what I will do now is I will take one of these branches they're still young, fresh and flexible. And this is why you can only do it with fresh and young branches. Don't try to do this with like mature old branches because they will snap. And then I just lay it down nice and horizontal here and tie it in. And the reason on why you want to do it like this is that over this year, new shoots are going to appear. And they will obviously all spring up and they will all grow vertical. And what you do then in next year, February, March, depending on your weather situation, whenever you're ready to cut back your hardwoods is you come in with your secateurs and you cut those new vertical shoots back. You don't cut them back all the way to the horizontal branch. You always leave two buds. And the reason for it is that on these two bots, new fruits are going to appear. So over the years, you have a wonderful framework of these really lovely, sturdy, horizontal branches here. And then with a lot of like tiny knots coming up everywhere, which are going to produce a lot of fruit. And this is a reason on why this is a very space efficient kind of way on how to train your fruit, but still you can really maximize your harvest. There is one more thing which I kind of found quite intriguing about it is that I'm never sure if I really told you, but I um, grew up in the north of Germany and this area is quite popular for fruit production. There are a lot and a lot of apples and pears coming from this area. Oh, this is a difficult one. I'm going to do it in a second. So. Uh, what uh, the people back then did, and I think they still do it, is to put bricks into the fruiting trees to weigh the branches down. And by doing so, the liquid that runs through the tree changes and the tree's under stress and the things like, oh, oh, something is not right here. I need to produce more flowers and more fruit to have more offspring. And by doing this, by putting bricks into the trees and laying the branches down, you change something in the system and you're going to be rewarded with more fruit. And I asked myself if this is the same with Espalier. And this is not like from a book now. This is what I found online. So this source is a little bit like, mm, I'm not sure if it's really safe and sound, but they say yes the same thing happens and this is why espalier fruiting trees they produce generally a lot of fruit so what i will do now is tie everything in properly here really need to see where everything goes because this branch is kind of like here somewhere in the middle so i'm not really sure if i leave it or not and then also with that beauty over there and then in a second i can give you an update on how it looks close up Both cherries are tied in and I really love it, even though I have to say that especially the one on the left here, I kind of managed to make the cherry tree disappear, especially once the branches are tied in on the bamboo canes because there are no blooms, no leaves, no fruit, no nothing. So there's nothing really to look at. But in general, I think that this is really going to work out and going to look fantastic, especially once there are first leaves appearing. So what I did basically is I really tied them in, secured them well. Um, it's lovely because they are very young and fresh stems, so they're not brittle at all. Here at the last layer, well, there was one small flimsy stem here, which was kind of like really awkward in the middle. So what I did is I cut it on an angle. I left two buds, so I'm still going to have some fruits eventually here. On the left, there was a stem. Again, a flimsy one, but I think this is still going to grow in. And then here on the right, there is one where I was like, I'm not sure. I hope something comes because it is a perfect angle. What you can do to 
try and test if there's still life in the branches. You come with a fingernail and just rub over it and just remove a little bit of the top bark and then if it's still lovely and green underneath, you know that there's still life in here, which is the case. Bam Lapens, the cherry on the right. Well, that was, that was quite interesting because, I mean, I showed you before and I told you that this doesn't really lend itself into be grown as an aspalier yet, but I think it's gonna work still. So here on the left, there was a little easier. So this stem here, that kind of works pretty well. So I tied it in. I've got this one here, which makes no sense, but I was like, you know what? I'm still gonna leave it and see what happens. The one on the right, oh, that is a bad angle to be honest, but I couldn't also pull it down. So I thought I'd try it for now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it in the position where it is, but let's see. Then towards the base of there what I did is I just cleared it off a little bit so I just removed all of these like long stems I want to doing anything anymore still there are flowers appearing here so it's going to fruit so I'm definitely going to leave these very excited about that I think that in the long run this is going to be a really lovely project a lovely journey that I can take you with me into the vegetable garden every now and then give you updates later on in the year if I'm going to have a harvest I'm very happy about this step forward into my vegetable garden Alfie didn't really care so much about replanting cherry trees because she didn't join us in the vegetable garden today. But even though she was always in the upper garden, had a close eye on what I was doing down there. So I hope that you were more intrigued about me planting cherry trees down there because going into this video, I did quite a lot of research. I went to the garden center, took photos of all the cherry trees that they carry there and the two varieties that I planted today were heavily recommended. They had really good reviews and I was so longing to really get on with this project because there was an idea that was honestly lingering around in my mind already for quite a while. And I think this is just the perfect location to grow cherries as aspalier trees. I also wanna do some more couple videos in that area there. Clearly, I mean, the raised beds have to be filled, but I also want to bring some beauty into this area there because I don't only see a kitchen garden or a vegetable garden as an area of the garden where you harvest something. I also want to have something nice to look at. So I think about growing another calamitous there, but this time around something that is going to climb. And I also want to do a little spring pot arrangement or generally just a nice flower pot arrangement there because at the moment there's a lot of straw. There is a lot of like unique color there and I'm kind of missing something nice to look at. So more videos are definitely Definitely on their way. So all I can say now is thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you if you decide to subscribe to my channel or if you give me a thumbs up for today's video. If you want to see more of my garden, just click on the link down below this video because this is the link straight to my Instagram. And now we, well, little Missy is cleaning herself, but we're still going to say bye. And I would honestly love to welcome you next time around in my garden. Take care, guys. Bye.